from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Special coverage sponsored by AWS Worldwide Public Sector. Welcome to theCUBE Virtual. This is our coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, specialized programming for worldwide public sector. I'm Lisa Martin. I've got a couple of guests here from Novetta. Please welcome Stephen Adelman, Principal Computer Scientist, and Kevin Heald, Vice President of Information Exploitation. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right, guys. So, so Kevin, we're going to start with you. Give our audience an introduction to Novetta. What do you what do you guys do? Who are you? How do you play in the public sector government space? Great, yeah, thank you, Lisa. Uh, so Novetta, um, Novetta is a technology services company focused on government solutions. So primarily national security solutions. Uh, so think customers such as DOD, the intelligence community, FBI, law enforcement, and things like that. Um, about 13, 1,300 employees worldwide, um, primarily um, you know, in our field, uh, cleared resources um, that really focus on cloud first solutions for our customers. So solving the tough mission challenges our customers have. So that could be in technology solutions such as data analytics, AI, ML, IOT, secure workloads, full spectrum cyber, COP, video processing, really anything that's a high end technology solution is something we do for the government. Um, we have been a privilege, we have, it's a privilege to be a partner with AWS for, for some time now. In fact, I think the first reInvent we may have been to Stephen was six years ago, five years ago. 2012 or 13. Yeah, yeah. so we've, we've, we've been around for a while, really kind of enjoying it and certainly sad that we're going to be missing an in-person reInvent this year, but looking forward to doing it virtually. So we are actually an advanced tier partner with AWS um, with a machine learning and government competency. Um, and really kind of to, 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 to pump the ML side of that, that was one of our first competencies with, competencies with AWS and led by a center of excellence uh, that I have in my division that really focuses on machine learning and how we apply it for the mission. And so um, really we focus on protecting the nation and protecting our equities as a country. And on behalf of the country, we thank you. Steven, give me a little bit of information from a, a double click perspective as computer scientists. What are some of the key challenges that Novetta helps its customers solve and how do you do that with AWS? Yeah, thank you. So um, really as a, a company that is, is, is data first, so our, our initial love and, and still our kind of strongest uh, competency is in um, applying solutions to large data sets. And as you can imagine, uh, the bigger the data set, the more compute you need, the, the, the more resources you need, and the, the flexibility from those resources is truly important, which led us very early, as in, especially in the government space and public sector space, to be an early adopter uh, of cloud resources because of the fact that, you know, rather than standing up a 200 node cluster at, at many millions of dollars, we could, we could spin up AWS resources um, process a big data set and then and then uh, get the answers an analyst or an operator needed and then spin down those resources when 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 that kind of compute wasn't needed and, and that has really um, uh, kind of informed how we do our work uh, as as Novetans that that cloud infrastructure and now pushing into the edge compute space, still kind of keeping those cloud best practices in play to get to access to more data. The, the, two, the, the two biggest, I think, revolutions that we've seen uh, with regards to uh, using data to inform business processes and missions has been that, that cloud resource that allows us to do so much with so less and so much more flexibly. And then the idea of cheap compute making it to the edge and the ability to apply sensors to, to places where you know it would been would have been you know operationally or cost prohibitive to do that, and then uh, ironically, those are two things that aren't necessarily data analytics or machine learning focused. But man, did they make it easier to collect that data and process that data, and then get the answers back out. So that really has 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 kind of um, uh, shaped a lot of the way Novetta has grown as a company and how we serve our customers. So Kevin, back over to you. Let's, one of the things that we've been talking about almost all year is just the acceleration in digital transformation and how much faster organizations, private sector, public sector need to innovate to stay 
relevant to stay competitive. How do you, are you working with government customers to help them innovate so quickly? You know, we are very fortunate that a set of customers that's focus is actually innovation. It's focus is IRAD. Um, and, you know, we can't do the cool things we do without those customer relationships that really encourage us to, um, to try new things out and quite frankly, fail quickly when we need to. And so we, by establishing that relationship, what we've been able to do is to blend agile development, agile acquisition with government requirements process, right? If, if you know, the, the typical stereotype of government work is it's this very stovepiped, hardcore acquisition process, right? And so we've been fortunate to instead try quick win kind of projects. And so one of the biggest things we do is partner with our government customers and try to find a difficult um, challenge to solve over a six to 12 month time, right? So instead of making this long four or five year acquisition cycle, it's like, show me, right? How can we solve this problem? And then we partner with the mission partner, show success in six months, show that we can do it with a smaller pot of money. And then as we're able to actually make that happen, it expands in something bigger, broader, and then we kind of bring it together a coalition of the willing, if you will, in the government and saying, okay, are there other stakeholders that care about this problem? Bring them on, bring their problems and bring them together. And, you know, we can't do that with some of the passionate people we have. Like Steven's a perfect example. When we talk about Picard and the projects we're doing here, Steven's passion for this technology partnered with our customers having these challenges and trying to enhance what they're doing is a powerful combination. And then the last thing that we're able to do as a company is we actually spend a decent amount of our own dollar dollars on IRAD, um, so R&D that we fund ourselves. And so while finding those problems and spending government dollars to do that, we also have spent our own dollars on machine learning, IoT, sensor, next gen 5G and things like that, and how those can partner together, partner together to go back to the government. Yeah, Kevin. Go ahead, and, go and ahead I Stephen. Oh yeah, so I would even say, um, you know, there's this, there's a, a conventional wisdom that government is slow in, in plotting and a little bit behind commercial best practices, but there are, there are pockets in growing pockets um, across the government um, where they're really, they're really kind of jumping ahead of a lot of, of processes and getting in front of this curve and actually are quite innovative and, and, and because they, they, they kind of started off from behind, they can jump over a lot of kind of middle ground legacy technologies and they're really innovating. As Kevin said, with, with, with the Picard platform, we're partnering with um, PEO Digital in the Air Force and SAF CDM and, and Air Force Security Forces as that kind of trifecta of stakeholders who all want to uh, kind of saw a mission problem and wanted to, to move forward quickly and, and leave the legacy behind and, and really take a quantum leap forward. And if anything, they're, they're driving us to, to innovate more, to, to, to introduce more of those kind of modern practices. Um, and, and Novetta as a company loves to find those spots in the government sector where we've got those great partners who love what we're doing. And it's this great feedback loop where, um, where we can solve hard technical problems, but then see them deployed to some really important and really cool and impactful missions. And we tend to recruit that that set, uh, that kind of nexus of people who want to both solve a really difficult problem, but want to see it executed in a really impactful way as well. I mean, that really creates a great bond for us. And, and, and I'm really excited to say that, that a lot of the government is really taking a move forward in this, this, this realm. And I think it's, it's just good for our country and good for the missions that they support. Absolutely. And it's also surprising because as you both said, you know, there is this expectation that government processes are lengthy, you know, laborious, um, not able to be turned around quickly. But as you, as uh, Kevin, you just said, you know, helping customers, uh, government agencies get impact within six to 12 months versus four to five years. So you talked about Picard, interesting name. Kevin, tell me a little bit more about that technology and what it is that you guys deliver that's unique. Well, I, I, honestly, it's probably best to start with Stephen. Um, I can give you the high level. Um, this is Stephen's vision. I have to give him credit for that. Um, and I will say um, we we have lots of fun acronyms. So it is an actual, it is, it is a backronym, right, Stephen? Doesn't it actually stand for something? It stands for Platform for Integrated C3 and Responsive yeah. for Defense. Um, and okay, I impressive. 
The, the Star Trek theme is a leg up from the last set of programs I had, which were <laughs> after My Little Ponies. So, um, oh wow, that's a definite uh, step in a different direction. I right. like it. Part of the the great thing about working in the government is you get to name things, cool things. So, <laughs> but uh, to, to to get to your question, uh, so so Picard really sprung out of this idea that I had a, a few years ago that. Um, that the world, but but for our space, the Department of Defense and the federal government was going to see a massive influx of, of the desire to consume sensors from, from areas of responsibility, from installations, and, and frankly, from battlefields. Um, but they were going to have to do it in a way um, uh, that presented some real challenges that you couldn't just kind of throw compute at it or throw traditional IT processes at it. You know, we have legacy sensors that are 40 years old sitting on installations, you know, old programmable logical controllers or facilities control systems that were written in Cobalt in the 70s, right? And we're, we're, are, are not even IP based, most of them. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you have seven figure sensors that are, you know, throwing out megabits of, uh, of second of data that are mounted to the back of Jeeps, right? That'll, that are bouncing through the desert today, but will be bouncing through the jungle tomorrow. And you have to find all of those kind of and combine all of those together um, and, and kind of create a cohesive data center for data set set for you know, the mission for, um, um, you know, what we call a user defined common operating picture for a person to, to kind of combine all of those different resources and make it work for them. And so we found a great partner with security forces. Um, they, they realized that they wanted to, to make a quantum leap forward. They had this idea that the next defender, so there are, they're like a military police outfit, that the next defender was going to be a data-driven defender and they were gonna have to win the information war, war as much as they had to kind of dominate physical space. And they immediately got what we were trying to achieve. And, and it was just this great synergy. And then we've piled on some other elements and we're really moving that platform forward to, to um, kind of take every little bit of information we can get from the areas of responsibility and get it into a, you know, your, your modern data lake where they can extract information from all that data. Kevin, as the VP of Information Exploitation, that's a very interesting title. How are you helping government organizations to win the war on information, leverage that information to make big impact fast? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of it is, is that we try to break down the barriers between systems um, and data so that we can actually enable that data to fuse together to find and get insights into it. Um, you know, as ML and AI have become trendy topics, you know, they're very data hungry operations. And I think what Steven has done with Picard and his team is really, we want to be able to make those sensors seamless from a plug and play perspective that I can plug in a new sensor. It's a standards based um, uh, interface that sends that data back so that we can then take it back to the user defined operation picture and make some decisions based off of that data. Um, you know, what's more is that data could even be fused with more than the data that Stephen's collecting off those sensors. It could be commercial data, other government data. And I think as, as, data, as uh, Stephen said earlier, you have to get it back. And as long as you've gotten it back and you're able to share it with some of our mission partners, then you can do amazing things with it. And, you know, Stephen, I, I know you have some, some pretty cool ideas on what we're going to do on the edge, right? How do we do some of this work at the edge where a sensor doesn't allow us to pull all that data back? Yeah, and and to 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 follow on to what you were were kind of referring to with regards to 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 handling heterogeneous data from different sensors, um, the uh, one of the main things that that our government customers and we have seen is that there are a lot of um, uh, historically there are a lot of vertical solutions where you know the sensor, the platform, and then the data lake are kind of all part of this proprietary stack. And we quickly realized that that just doesn't work. And so one of the major thrusts of that Picard platform um, was to make sure that we had it, uh, a, a platform by which we could consume data through adapters from essentially any sensor speaking any protocol with any style data object, whether that was an industry standard or a proprietary protocol, we could quickly ingest it and bring it into our data lake. And then to pile on to what Kevin was talking about with compute, 
right? So you have um, a, a, like almost like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs when it comes to, to cyber data or to, to this IoT data or, or kind of unified data. Um, you know, you want to turn it into basic information, alerts, alarms, then you want to do reporting on it or analytics or some, uh, some higher level workflow function. And then finally, you probably want to perform some analytics or some trending or some anomaly detection on it. And, and that gets more computationally intensive each step of the way. And so you've got you've to gotta build a platform that allows you to, to both take some of that high level compute down to the edge um, but also then bring some of that data up into the clouds where you can do that processing and, and you have to have kind of fungibility between that. And so that Picard platform allows you to kind of bring GPUs and high processing units down to the edge and, and make that work. Um, but then also, and then as maybe even a first pass sieve to rule out some of the most, you know, uh, some of the boring data in the video analytics platform, we call it blue sky and blue ocean, right? So you're recording lots of video that's not that interesting. How do you filter that out? So you're only sending the information, the, the interesting video up. Um, so you're not wasting bandwidth on stuff that just doesn't matter. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of kind of tuning these knobs and having a flexible enough platform that you can bring compute down when you need it and you can bring data up to compute on big cloud while you need it and just kind of finding a way to tune that. That, that really does, I mean, it, 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 you know, that's a lot of words about how you do that, but what that comes to is flexible hardware and being able to apply those DevOps and CI CD platform um, characteristics to that edge hardware and having a unified platform that allows you to kind of orchestrate your applications and your services all the way up and down your stack from microcontrollers to a big cloud instantiation. You make that sound so easy, Stephen. Kevin, let's wrap it up with you in terms of like making impacts and going forward. We know the edge has exploded even more during this in very interesting year and that's going to be something that's probably going to stay, um, stay as a permanent um, impact or effect. What are some of the things that we can expect in 2021 in terms of how you're able to help government organizations capitalize on that, find things faster, make impact faster? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the, the, the cool thing we're seeing is, is that um, there's a lot more commoditization of sensors. There's a lot more sensored information. And so let's use LIDAR as an example. We, you know, things are getting cheaper. And so we can all of a sudden do more and more things at the edge than we ever would have expected, right? When, you know, Steven's team is integrating camera data and fence data from 40 years ago, you know, it, it's just saying on off, it's not doing anything fancy. But now we, you know, the, you know, Steven, I can't remember what the metric you gave me before was, but it, it the, the cost of LIDAR has dropped so significantly that we can now then deploy that. We can actually roll it out there and not being locked into a proprietary uh, system. Um, so I, I, I see that being very powerful. You know, also I can see where you start having sensors interact with each other, right? So one sensor finds one thing. And then a, a good example that we've started to, to experiment with, and I think Steve, you could touch on it is, using like triggering a sensor triggers a drone to actually investigate what's going on and then therefore can bring video back and then automatically can investigate instead of having to deploy a defender to actually see what happened at that at that endpoint Stephen. I, I I don't know if there's some more detail you can provide there. Yeah no so exactly that Kevin so so the power of the the sensor is is something something old that, that gives you very uninteresting data, like a one or a zero or an on or off, um, can detect something very specific and then do something kind of high speed, like task a drone to give you a visual assessment and then run object detection or facial recognition on, you know, do object detection to find a person and do facial recognition on that person to find out if that's a, a patrol walking through a field or a bad guy trying to, to, to invade your space. Um, and so it's it's really the confluence and 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 the gestalt of all of these sensors and the analytics working together um, that really creates the power from from very simple simple delivery. I, I think um, there's this you know this idea that you know 
a hundred bytes of data is not that in, important, but when you put a million sensors giving you a hundred bytes of data, you can truly find something extremely powerful. And then when you kind of, and you, you make those interactions sing, um, it's, it's amazing to us the, the productivity that we can produce and the kind of fidelity of response that we can give to, to actors in, in this space, whether that's a defender trying to defend a base or a maintenance person trying to uh, proactively um, replace uh, the fan or clean the fan on an HVAC system, so so you know you don't it, there isn't a fire at a base. Or or um, uh, it, interestingly enough, one of the things that we we we've been able to achieve is we've taken um, maintenance data for helicopter engines, and and we've been able to proactively say, hey, you need to you need to take care of this part of the helicopter engine. Um, and it saves money, it saves downtimes, it keeps the, the birds in the air. It, and, and it's a relatively simple algorithm that we were able to, to achieve. And we were able to do that with the, the maintenance people, bring them along in this endeavor and create analytics that they understood and could trust. Um, and, and so I think that's really the power of this space. Tremendous power. I wish we had more time to, to dig into it, guys. Thank you so much for sharing, not just your insights, what Novet is doing, but your passion for what you're doing and how you're making such an impact. Your passion is definitely palpable. Stephen, Kevin, thank you for joining me today. Cool, thank, thank you. you. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE Virtual.